This week, Cedar Point released their official safety guidelines for Top Thrill 2, and people are not happy. I admit, on first glance, I thought this was ridiculous and inexcusable. But once you dig into it, you can be more sympathetic with Cedar Point's position. But that still doesn't mean they didn't drop the ball. Let's take a look at what was announced. First, no flip-flops, no sandals. Your shoes have to have a strap or a back. You won't be able to get past the entrance if your shoes aren't up to code, and you won't be able to stash those in a locker and wait in the line barefoot. If you don't have the right shoes, you gotta buy some from the souvenir shop, or you can't ride. I know, people say it's crazy to walk around Cedar Point in flip-flops, but with the beach right there, and with hotel breakers right there, you're probably gonna find a lot of that. Next, at the right entrance, there's gonna be metal detectors. Phones, keys, lighters, lip gloss. All that has to be stored in a locker, and those lockers are not free. Last year, I paid $3 to rent a locker outside of Steel Vengeance, so I'd be surprised if this was any different. Let's start with that. People are calling this an upcharge attraction. Unless you got someone in your party that's gonna wait for all of you to get off. Which, let's be honest, can take 2, 3, 4 hours. Maybe more if it breaks down. Then, you're forced to pay to ride Top Thrill 2. If you're gonna offer these big lockers outside the ride, I think you do have to charge for them. Otherwise, they can be abused, and you may end up with no lockers available for people trying to ride. I don't think it has to be $3. They can achieve this goal with $1. But still, I get the idea of charging for lockers outside the ride area. The question is, why don't they have lockers inside the ride area? If you recall, Top Thrill got shut down right after a woman got hit by something that flew off the train. It didn't fly out of someone's pocket. It actually flew off the train. But still, that doesn't change the fact that loose articles have become a big problem, and people have been hurt by flying phones on rides all over the country. I just assumed Top Thrill 2 would have a strict policy, and under that assumption, it's insane that they did not plan better with all the time they had to do this. Steel Vengeance went through all the stages over the last five years. First, allow everything. Then, allow nothing. Then, use pouches on the train. Then, allow the small stuff and let you put that in a free locker at the end of the queue. It went through all the growing pains, and they landed with a pretty decent system. So, with the intention of having a strict loose article policy, it seems impossible that Cedar Point could screw this up so bad. But apparently, that was not their intention. It sounds like they were going to have the same policy as before. No bags or bottles, but you can keep your stuff in your pocket. But Zamperla revised their recommendation late in the game, and now you gotta ditch your stuff. Because of that, they didn't have time to get the free lockers installed. That requires not only the lockers to get designed, delivered, and installed, but also the infrastructure to funnel people through that area and have a path for them to get their stuff back. Give them two years to design this, sure. Give them a few weeks, no, that's not going to happen. This is a bad situation and Cedar Point knows it. It's not going to be fun for their employees. You're going to have a lot of angry people yelling at them. It's not going to be fun for people waiting in line. I know, we all used to walk around without phones and we all lived, but it's nice to have contact with the outside world, telling the rest of your party where you are and how much longer till you get on. My knee-jerk reaction was, how does Cedar Point think this is okay? But it's obvious they don't. They got stuck and this was the best they can do on short notice. The only thing they could do better right now is maybe knock down the locker price. That being said, give it a year or maybe even a few months. I believe in Cedar Point to do the right thing. And by the end of the summer, or by opening day 2025 at the latest, I bet they have those free lockers outside the station. It seems like they're only in the spot because they went in trying to be more lenient, and whatever Zamperla told them after initial testing made them change course. Aside from that, this has a 52 inch height requirement. No max height is posted, so that's good for all you tall people. And you can wear glasses just as long as it has a strap. That's all I got for now. I know, when this all dropped on Monday, it caused a big storm, but after looking into it more, to me, it makes more sense. And it sucks for now, but it should get better in the future. Let me know if you have any thoughts on the situation in the comments below. And before you leave, please drop a like and give me a sub if you're new here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.